Hi, I'm Lauren Winters, and this is the uh, first uh, HiViz.com how-to video. What I'm going to show you how to do is build the crossbeam photogate. I have the finished product right here. Um, now, the way the crossbeam photogate works is there's an infrared beam passing here and another one here. And in order to uh, set off your flash or camera, the subject that you're photographing has to pass through the intersection of the two beams. If it breaks this beam alone or this beam alone, that's not enough. So me that means you can pre-focus your camera right at the intersection of the two beams. All right, now this is a 12-inch square uh, gate. You can build these different sizes, and the size you build will depend upon uh, what you want to photograph. I built this one to photograph small birds. Uh, if you are just interested in photographing insects, you could probably go with a smaller gate, say 6 inches or 8 inches square. Um, or you can have a selection of gates. They're very easy to build. It took me about an hour to build this one. Um, so let's move uh, to the workshop now and see how this is done. In order to make the framework, I'm going to use a one half inch PVC pipe. I've got about a four foot length here. I'll cut this into four 12 inch lengths and then I'll connect them together with these elbows. So I'll go ahead and cut off the first length. Mark in 12 inches. The miter box works well for this because you can make a nice straight cut using it. Okay, all four pieces are cut. You can clean up the ends with a file. And once the ends are clean, then we'll uh, drill the holes for the uh, detector and the emitter. Then we'll come back over here and assemble it. Now that I've cut the uh, PVC pipe, I'm going to drill holes uh, right in the center of each piece. So I've marked uh, each piece at the 6 inch point. I'm going to use a drill press to drill the holes. If you have a drill press, then uh, use it because you can get uh, make sure that you get your holes uh, vertical to the uh, perpendicular to the axis uh, of the tube. I also have two blocks of wood that are clamped onto the uh, platform so that they hold the uh, piece of tubing tightly into place, get it aligned here, and a couple of tie downs to uh, keep the tubing from jumping up, and I'm ready to uh, drill the first one. I started with is 13 64ths of an inch. It's kind of an odd size, but it's just the right size for the uh, uh, emitter and detector to fit into. And I drilled this first hole all the way through. Now I'll do the same thing with the other three. Okay, the four pieces are done. The next thing I'm going to do is use a one quarter inch bit and I'm just going to drill one of the holes on one side of each piece. So one, uh, we'll have a small hole and a large hole on each one. I have the framework laid out here ready to assemble. I'll start with this piece. When you put the framework together, be sure that the larger of the two holes is toward the outside of the framework. That would be the quarter inch hole. And just put the elbows on uh, loosely. You're going to tighten them up later. Um, I'll go ahead and assemble the rest of it. The next step is to align the, uh, the two uh, beams. So for that I use a 3 16th inch steel rod and just slip it through the holes on one side and back out through the other side. 
and adjust it as you need to so that the rod moves there freely. Do the same thing on the uh, other side. Squeeze the framework together and pound it down with a mallet. <clears throat> and there the frame is uh, ready to go. So uh, we're ready to do the electrical wiring. Now, if you want to paint your gate, then now is the time to do the, uh, the painting. Uh, otherwise, we can uh, move right into the electrical wiring phase. Now I'm ready to put the uh, photo detectors and the emitters in the framework. Components with the blue cases are the infrared LEDs. Those are the emitters. And the components with the clear cases are the uh, photo transistors. Those are the detectors. I'm also going to cut two one-inch sections from a soda straw uh, and then I'm going to use the straw to shield the photo detectors. Uh, the reason this is necessary is that these gates are often used in daylight and so uh, the straws will be used to uh, shield the photo detectors from the daylight to some extent. But first I want to um, paint the straw with a black paint in order to uh, shield even more of the light. So I've already done that with this straw and I'll cut off of the straw two one-inch sections next. Now I'm ready to mount the components in the framework. As you recall, the outer hole is the larger diameter. This allows the component to slip all the way through. The inner hole uh, is a smaller diameter and the lip of the component cannot pass through it and so uh, it seats right there. Now I'm going to spread the legs on the bottom so that when I hold it like this the component doesn't slip out. Now I'm ready to hot glue. I let the hot glue dry so that the LED is seated in there well. Uh, when you do this, try not to get hot glue on the uh, top of the case, but if you do, after it dries, you can just clean it off. When I put the LED in there, I positioned it in such a way that the longer leg of the LED was here, the shorter leg is here. Uh, the reason I did that is to order, in order to match the online instructions, uh, which uh, you can use when you uh, uh, do your electrical wiring. Now I'm ready to uh, mount the uh, photo detector on the opposite side along with the piece of straw that will shield it from light. I've uh, placed the photo detector in the uh, framework and spread the legs. And in this case, uh, this is the shorter leg. Now I'll put on the hot glue. Before the hot glue dries, I'm going to put on the one inch snout to it so that that will dry on along with it. and try to get that oriented so that it's pointed directly to the LED on the opposite side. And then let it dry. Now, while the glue is drying, you want to, uh, you may need to readjust the position of the straw to make sure that it doesn't tilt one direction or the other. Okay. Once the glue is dry, then put another coating all the way around the straw, and this will hold the straw fairly tightly in place. 